I have some very important news to share that I came across in an article recently that concerns all amateur radio operators worldwide on the 70 centimeter band. It relates to this article here, ham radio users clash with Starlink rival AST space mobile over spectrum use. So in essence, if you go through and read this article, and I'll put a link in the description below to this, Basically, AST Space Mobile is, or AST Science and LLC, is a company that is based out of uh, Texas, a Texas-based satellite internet company, and it's requesting long-term use of the 430 to 440 megahertz spectrum worldwide. Now, this band is already allocated to um, amateur radio, including for emergency communications, amateur satellites, SSB, digital TV, data modes, repeaters, all sorts of things. And in most cases, we are on a secondary use uh, in that band. So we're not the primary users. I think in the United States, primary users might be defense. I think it's the same here in Australia. But there's lots of different users in this band. But the primary 430 to, 4 mega, 430 to 440 megahertz band, there's a lot of inputs to repeaters. There's a lot of other stuff that we use as amateur radio operators. So the concern, though, is that Due to this satellite system, it could cause widespread and persistent interference uh, to legitimate amateur radio operations worldwide. And that's a key thing that we'll just bring up now about worldwide. And I'll get into that in a second. Now, um, AMSAT actually posted about this on the 26th of June, and I actually missed this. Uh, I've seen the link to the news article, and on doing further research, I found this particular page. Again, I'll link it below. But AST... Space Mobile have already launched five Bluebird commercial satellites. They're operating in low Earth orbit. They were launched on uh, September the 12th, 2024. And these satellites, they're transmitting telemetry on amateur radio frequencies, okay? So they're a commercial satellite that is transmitting on amateur radio frequencies, and they're not amateur radio satellites. So they're using these channels at the moment, 430 0.5, and these telemetry links are 50 kilohertz wide. Now, five satellites might cause interference every now and then maybe, but you're probably not likely to really notice it as much unless you've got a repeater on this input or something, perhaps. However, the problem is, is the future plan. So AST plan to launch 243 of these satellites to increase their total constellation to 248. So they're all expected to use this 430 to 440 megahertz band for telemetry, tracking and command um, signaling outside of the US as well. So now according to their FCC filings in uh, February 2025 and on June the 20th, 2025, each satellite's UHF beam will include one command and one telemetry channel. Channels will range in bandwidth from 64 kilohertz up to 256 kilohertz. So you can imagine with hundreds of these satellites, there's always going to be one overhead, meaning near continuous risk of interference for ground-based um, ham radio operators. Um, again, I'm not just in the United States. These could be all over overhead around the world and who knows, they could even grow their numbers even more. So um, there's a couple of things that I read in previous this previous article. Um, Mario Lorenz, he's a German ham. He has formally objected uh, to the FCC. And again, I'm going to get into this FCC business in a little bit. Um, he was speaking here that AST seek worldwide access to a significant portion of the spectrum, which would almost guarantee international harmful interference. And... Um, there's also been an analysis done here by the AMSAT uh, DL president here, Peter Golzo. I hope I pronounced that right, DB2OS. And if you actually go to that link, um, it's got some pretty informa uh, pretty interesting information and technical breakdown about all of the potential harmful interference. So have a look at that. But there's also been some uh, Redditors as well. Um, I found this Reddit thread here that they've been discussing this. And in actual fact, there's an interesting template down here, which We'll speak about soon but uh why this is a global problem so the problem can be is that it's not just the united states here the ast's request has been made to the fcc space bureau including uh the use of the 430 to 440 megahertz band globally so they've gone to the fcc and said we want to use this 
frequency portion globally. Now, that's a little bit unusual because the FCC only regulates the US spectrum. They don't speak for the rest of the world. Uh, usually, international use of amateur bands is typically coordinated through the ITU or the IARU, and in actual fact, we had some pushback on the use of 1.2 gigs, 1296 megahertz, at a recent IARU um, conference. So that was uh, that that was discussed. So the fact that they're going to the FCC and saying, "Hey, we want to use this 70 centimeter band worldwide," well, the FCC don't really have the authority to go and regulate it outside of the United States. But anyway, so the AST, they've appeared to bypass this international consultation. They're already operating in amateur-specific uh, frequencies. They're also operating, they're not on a primary service, they're not on a secondary service. I don't know what service, so I don't even know how they're operating or why they're operating in that band and how they've gotten permission to do it. Uh, I'd have to research that in more detail. Some of you guys in the comments might know, but... Uh, they need basically to get approval. And this is, um, in especially in places like Europe. So in Europe, they have less UHF allocation than the US. They have 420. Uh, they don't have 420 to 430 megahertz. They've only got um, the 430 to 440 megahertz. And uh, it also affects here in Australia. We also have a lot of our inputs to our repeaters and we also use simplex and everything else in that particular band. So again, this uh, band on 70 centimetres, it it supports other amateur radio satellites, AMSAT satellites, emergency communications networks, search and rescue, um, data modes, DATV, uh, digital amateur television, SSB work. Um, it's a popular band for entry-level operators, uh, especially here in Australia, I know for sure. Um, so, yeah... It's, it's not just a hobby band. It's basically an operational band. It's a service band that have been used in a lot of, like, in a lot of um, situations. So, you know, wildfires, hurricanes, disasters, all those sort of things. So the issue that we've got here is that if we let one company grab global access to an amateur radio band through one regulator, it sets a bit of a decent precedent. So um, the more that these commercial constellations go up like ASTs, the more pressure there's going to be on our existing spectrum and we have to try and save our existing spectrum. This is the spectrum that's allocated for non-commercial uh, public service use. So um, this is where it comes to you guys. What can we actually do about this? Well, I must admit that I was a little bit late to the party uh, in all of this. In actual fact, if we read back here on the AMSATS website, uh, it does speak about you can... Um, submit uh the, you can read the sum, uh, the submission that was requested to the fcc space bureau but then you can also express a comment to the fcc now you can do this this through an express comment which is here and you can fill in the details here um there is again a template on the reddit post which i'll go back to this uh, user here zimmer 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 he wrote a very nice um uh, comment back here so you could use bits out of that you could paraphrase it do all those sort of things or you could just put your own in uh, depending on what you want to do there you can also do a, a more detailed standard comment where you can submit maybe a document a pdf or dot doc file so you can do that too um, if you want to submit that um, and you can also uh, go back and you can also read some of those um, that have made uh, submissions. So if we go here, I think there's been quite a few, 785 submissions. Um, now, the big problem, and this is where I've fallen over, is it's actually due by the July the 21st. So uh, in the US, that is tomorrow. In Europe, that is tomorrow. Uh, in Australia, that is today. So um, I'm getting this out now so that hopefully all of you guys can um, see this, make a response to the FCC and say, hey, this is affecting not just the United States, but it's also affecting worldwide um, and, you know, put whatever you need to in your submissions. But um, we need to do this. Um, tell them how you use the 430 to 430, uh, 440 megahertz band, why we need to protect it from interference and why this is important and that international spectrum decisions should involve international coordination and not just the FCC rubber stamping things. I'm, I'm not blaming the FCC yet because they haven't done anything. They're sort of asking for these submissions. 
uh, AST space mobile seems a little bit dodgy that you're already using um, these frequencies. I might be completely off here and they might have permission to use these due to the shared access that we have in the amateur radio band, especially on 70 centimetres, at least here we're secondary users in Australia. I think that might be the same in the in the US. So just keep that in mind. Let me know in the comments below what you think to this, um, how we're going, are we... Are we just are we, are we making inroads to be able to save our spectrum? Because I think it's very important that we need to do so.